we just gotta play hard and, and execute because I don't think anyone can beat us. I want to be able to look back and say that I did everything I could. We're hitting on all cylinders with a three and inside. I've got a bigger poison. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jane McCarthy. Thanks for joining us for this special hometown madness edition of Crem 2 News. We're not just talking about one team in the NCAA tournament. We're talking about three. The Gonzaga men and women are going dancing, as are the Eastern Washington men for the first time in more than a decade. Crem 2's Darnay Tripp and Evan Klosky hit the road to cover the teams. Fortunately, they didn't have to go far. Darnay is just in Seattle with Gonzaga. Evan is in Portland with Eastern Washington. They're going to join us live in just a minute. First, let's take a look at what we have coming up for you in this next half hour. Basketball is in Eastern senior Parker Kelly's blood. The Spokane native helped lead the Gonzaga Prep Bullpups to a state championship four years ago. Now he's getting ready to step on the same stage his dad did as a Washington State Cougar more than three decades ago. In the way I see it, Parker has exceeded whatever I've done. It all started with former Zag standout Roni Turio. From France, he started a long line of successful recruits from overseas. Gonzaga was the choice. And Darnay Tripp found GU is actually leading the pack, recruiting on the international stage. I knew Gonzaga was a perfect fit for me. And we're going to start with the men tonight. Let's take a quick look at those matchups. Gonzaga takes on the Bison of North Dakota State on Friday. That game starts around 6.50. You can watch it on TNT. Eastern faces Georgetown on Thursday. That game should start just before 7 o'clock, and you can watch that on True TV. This is the third year Creme 2 Sports Director Darnay Tripp has traveled with the Zags. Let's toss it out to him live in Seattle tonight, Darnay. Hey Jane, it is a beautiful evening here in downtown Seattle, of course outside Key Arena, the Zags home for the coming few days. Well, for the second time in three years, Gonzaga enters the NCAA tournament with enormous expectations. Now we know what happened as the number one seed in 2013. This time around, Mark Few's team is the two seed, eliminating some of the spotlight. Also in their favor is experience from that Wichita State loss to the presence of a past NCAA champion in Kyle Wiltshire. There is no guarantee that this will benefit the Zags, but it's certainly good to have on their side. But I would think it would help. I would think the fact that, you know, this is Gary and Kevin and, and uh, some of these guys uh, fourth crack uh, at it. And, you know, uh, Wilch has, has obviously been all the way to a national championship and played it in a, you know, in a couple years. And Shemek's played in it three years now. Kyle Dranginis has played in it three years. So, uh, you know, it, I don't see how it can hurt. Well, another interesting component is Byron Wesley, but of all his experience previously at USC before he came to Gonzaga, this is his first ever trip to the NCAA tournament. Like Wesley, the coming weeks will mark the end of the college careers for Kevin Pangos and Gary Bell Jr. They have been instrumental in various Gonzaga milestones and have done so as running mates since day one. Uh, it's been nice, and it's kind of expected. You know, we played every single game together, so um, it's 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 been great, and uh, we've been successful. What was your first impression to this guy? You know, when he came here, he was in the gym 24/7. Uh, he was taking online class, but we were in class going to, uh, going to school. But he was always in the gym. Whenever we wanted to find him, he was here. I remember we played one on one, and it took me by surprise how physical he was. And uh, I knew right then it was going to be a good four years. And uh, it got me motivated because I wanted to beat him in one-on-one -on -one because I think I lost the first time. WCC Player of the Year here. What was that like seeing him reach that kind of status? Uh, it was nice as I know uh, before the year even started, a lot of people were saying he was preseason, you know, uh, Player of the Year. And 
for him to get that uh, was great to see. What do you think about what he did this year? And with so many more scores and weapons, you needed that defensive stopper. And he's always done that, but that became a bigger part of his role this year. Yeah, I was just about to say it's been consistent all four years, so it didn't really take me by surprise. Uh, but this year was he was healthy, obviously, so that helped um, and didn't disappoint. What do you think about the hair? I like the hair. You know, a lot of people said for him, you know, cut it off, but you know, I like that he he kept it and it's looking better right now. What do you think about the beard? I don't mind that either. I, I said that to him the other day. Uh, makes us both look older, I feel like, and looking at the pictures from freshman year to now, it's kind of a, a cool transition. What will you miss most about playing with this guy? Uh, his toughness, uh, his unselfishness, all that stuff. Um, makes my job way easier and it's just a joy to play with. So there's not many guys that, that play that way um, anywhere. So I've been lucky. And Kevin? Uh, his leadership and uh, you know to, to go to him in the clutch and for him to produce. Um, uh, that's, uh, that made him uh, the player he is today. You know, he's a competitor, and I'm a competitor too. So, you know, when we're playing together, uh, uh, we bring the best out of both of us. So, um, you know, I love playing alongside of him. And it's crazy. We only got six more games left, but you know, let's make the most of it. Couple amazing careers right there. Well, now with those two as seniors, a lot of people think this is the year Gonzaga could go further than ever. Now let's see where that would take us. Next week, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight would take place in Houston for the South region. If they get two wins there, it is on to their first ever Final Four. That would take place in Indianapolis, April 4th and the 6th. Now it has been over a decade since the Eastern Washington Eagles last made it to the big dance that changes this week when they hit the floor. Tomorrow, Krem 2's Evan Klosky is just a bit south of here in Portland with the team. Evan, what's the mood of the squad tonight? Yeah, Darnay, the mood is good here in Portland. Upbeat. Jim Hayford even went so far to tell CBS's Jim Rome on his radio show that we're going to win. We'll talk again. You like that confidence from Eastern Washington's head coach. It's a 13th seeded Eags look to take down the fourth seeded Georgetown Hoyas. Now, if you've done your due diligence while filling out the brackets, you know many people are picking Eastern for the upset. The Hoyas have lost to double digit seeds plenty of times in the past. In fact, their last five trips to the dance have resulted in losses to opponents seeded 10 or lower, and the Eags are excited for the opportunity and the challenge that's ahead. They're a really good team uh, with an outstanding coach. And the system they run is, is, you know, one of the trendsetters of basketball, the Princeton offense. And so, uh, we'll, we've got our hands full, but uh, my team's fearless. A Spokane native was one of Jim Hayford's first recruits at Eastern Washington. He saw the vision, and now the dream is coming to a reality as he is here at the big dance in Portland. His father also played at Washington State. He was also a Gonzaga Prep standout, and Taylor Vido has his story. Fate can be a funny thing at times. When Terry Kelly was a senior at Washington State University, the Cougs made it to the NCAA tournament for the first time in years. Fast forward to now, his son Parker Kelly is a senior at Eastern, and the Eags are dancing for the first time in a while as well. They'll both tell you it's a dream come true. When it comes to basketball in the inland northwest, a lot has changed over the past 40 years. But some things the senior from Spokane, Terry Kelly. seem to stay the same. Kelly. That is a standout ball player with the last name of Kelly. In the 70s, Terry Kelly was a record-setting star for Gonzaga Prep. He was one of John Stockton's idols. Terry would go on to be a standout at Washington State. And just four years ago, his son Parker made waves on the prep basketball team as well, leading them to the state title his senior year. Now a senior at Eastern, he's helped lead the Eagles to the big dance, much like his dad Terry did with the Cougs his senior year. There's been a lot of parallels between my career and his career, and um, I'm just so thankful that it's worked out the way it has. In his day, Terry Kelly was a lights-out shooter. Parker's no different. He's second all-time on the Eagles list of three-point shooters. Like father, like son. And I kept telling him, Parker, you don't want to waste any shots. And has it paid off? Who can forget when Parker, with a broken nose, hit the major three-pointer late in the game to help Eastern beat Indiana in Bloomington? Terry was there. The stress, unbearable. But, it, but it's very... 
It's very difficult to watch sometimes. Terry says he knows exactly what his son is going through on the court, but that didn't prevent him from his nervous ritual at Reese Court. I would be walking, um, I, I, I wouldn't be able to sit down for the entire game and I would be pacing somewhat. Terry says he'll try not to do that during Thursday night's game, albeit the biggest game of his son's career. But win or lose, both father and son know it's been the trip of a lifetime. That's just a true blessing. I mean, uh, to be able to, to be in the dance my, my senior year and, and to go out on top is, uh, is just awesome. If the threes are going in, then it's going to be a very close game. So. I'll just give him a hug and tell him I love him and just greatly respect what he's done. Regardless of the outcome, the story of the Kelly family is one we'll be telling for some time. Taylor Vido, Krem 2 News. Parker is a big threat beyond the three-point arc. Out of all of the collegiate athletes who have chucked 143 pointers, he ranks in the top 15 in three-point percentage. He could be a big spark and a key in tomorrow's game against Georgetown. Jane? Evan, thanks very much. Well, back to Gonzaga. There's no doubt they have a great recruiting record. In the last few years, they've expanded the search to around the globe. I I checked the Washington and Spokane and I thought it's actually in uh, Washington, D.C., so I was uh, a little bit confused. Well, Darnay returns after the break to show us how GU is leading the pack, selecting the best of the best from the international stage. Among the most talked about players on this year's Gonzaga roster are names like Pangos, Sabonis, and Karnowski, all part of Gonzaga's long-standing international flavor. Thanks to one coach, GU has become a dominating force in recruiting overseas and beyond the border. I wasn't really paying attention like, to all of this because I was playing back home and I, I never knew I had the possibility to come here. I checked the Washington and Spokane and I thought it's actually in uh, Washington, D.C. So I was uh, a little bit confused. Uh, I never, I've never heard about it. I didn't even think about the uh, NCAA um, experience. It is so ingrained in the fabric of sports in the United States that it's easy to forget how foreign big-time college athletics is most everywhere else. It's a little bit different recruiting arena because those kids have different options and um, you know they have different things that are familiar to them. In many cases, the life of an NCAA student athlete isn't one of those things. If you want to go to the NBA, many people think that you would rather sign a contract overseas. Much less a career at a small Jesuit school located in the state so easily confused with that metropolis thousands of miles away. Some of my friends still ask me like, hey, how's the East Coast? So I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you guys are actually wrong. <laughs> Yet here they are, Shemek Karnowski and Doma Sabonis, highly sought after and highly regarded. One step from the NBA and two parts of a heralded wrinkle of Gonzaga basketball history. I mean, it's been a real, real component of you know building this program up to the level that it's at. One guy led to another and one relationship led to another relationship and just it's just kind of grown and flourished over the years. The Zags brought international recruits to Spokane before they became a national name, but there's no mistaking which player caused the levy to break. Aroni was kind of maybe the first, you know, modern era, let's say, big, big time uh, recruit from Europe. And many followed, European and otherwise, from as near as Kamloops to as far as New Zealand. In the last decade alone, GU has had 12 players come to campus from foreign countries without a high school or college stop in between. I looked at rosters from 20 other programs over the same 10-year span, blue bloods like Duke, Kansas, and Kentucky, to those with similarities to Gonzaga like Butler, Wichita State, and Villanova. 
Those 20 combined for 17 such international recruits. Again, that's just five more than GU fielded on its own since the 2005-2006 season. That was one of the one of the reasons I came here. You know, they have a big uh, big tradition with bigs. You know, Ronnie Turiev, uh, Robert Sacre. You know. Uh, all this international big, so I thought I thought about that. We can give these kids real hard proof of what we've done with international players, how we view them in our program, and the type of role they play within our program. That that makes it easier for them to see themselves being successful here because others have done it before them. There are various factors for their success, like the Bulldogs' style of play. How they share the ball, how they look for the bigs. Uh, I love this style. Um, it's very similar back home to Europe. Or the intimacy of a small school in a mid-sized town. They're able to come over here and assimilate really quick because there's good people that, that are looking out for them. All of that plays a part, but there's no question what, or rather who, is the primary reason for Gonzaga's recruiting wins on foreign soil. Behind the face of the Zags is their ambassador overseas. Tommy's been the driving force behind you know uh, us being able to, to get these guys. I think he's the main key uh, to this program uh, for getting international bigs over or international any type of players. Longtime Gonzaga assistant Tommy Lloyd was groomed for the task growing up in a home his parents opened up to one foreign exchange student after another and as a young adult playing and coaching in Germany and Australia. Because of those experiences, he is right at home when he's a long way from home. For one, I enjoy traveling. I, I never regretted the trips. Um, I always looked at it as, you know, it's 18 or 20 hours and I'm halfway across the world. And even if I go to Europe for two or three days sometimes, I kind of feel refreshed and re-energized just getting over there. And, and it's got a different vibe to it. So I, so I always enjoyed that. And, and part of that is my upbringing, you know, having been exposed to you know, a lot of different cultures and um, being comfortable talking to lots of people from different places and, um, and developing relationships and finding similarities. Another thing he has found is talent, and perhaps most important, he's found it early. In 2012, he laid the foundation with 16-year-old Lithuanian product Demontis Sabonis, who had no clue college in the United States was even an option. I was a big part because they were the first ones, they are the ones who spotted me. Just as he did with 17-year-old Polish 7-footer Szemek Karnowski at a tournament in Germany. I'm telling you, they were in touch with me for two years, so I really knew that they, they wanted me to come here and they wanted uh, me to play for them, so I was really excited about that. And Lloyd just kept showing up. I was like, oh, you're coming again? I'm like, oh my God, that's crazy. You're gonna fly from here to Poland and take a trip that is like 30 or 35 hours. And for, for him to just see one game and talk to me, that was amazing. By the time the likes of Duke and Kansas took interest in Karnowski, just as others did with Sabonis, the decision was made. Once we made the visits, we told Gonzaga and Tommy that if I would make my decision to go overseas, uh, Gonzaga was the choice. I knew Gonzaga was a perfect fit for me. It kind of takes the pressure of having to get them to understand Gonzaga in 60 minutes. You know, they can really get a year or two to, to really get a good feel for it on their own terms. And if they end up on campus, Lloyd knows the bond they formed on their home turf has to strengthen on his. Now, obviously, I feel responsible for you know their well-being and their experience when they're here, and and and, and you know I, I want to see them be as successful as they can possibly be at Gonzaga, both for the benefit of the player and the continuance of the pipeline. We've had a good run of international kids, so we'll continue to look down that avenue, and if it keeps producing results, we'll keep going to it. No surprise, Lloyd will be back overseas this spring. Now, Few made two noteworthy points about his top assistant. One, it is easy to waste time over there, something Lloyd uh, manages not to do. And number two, as you can tell, they have a very good reputation across the pond. Well, that's all from me in Seattle. Jane, we'll send it back to you. Good stuff. Thanks, Darnay. Well, the men aren't the only ones dancing. The Gonzaga women were on the bubble this year, but they made it into the tournament. A one on one with their first year head coach is next. It's over, so we put our hands up like the ceiling can hold us. Like the ceiling can hold us. Can we go back? This is the moment. Tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over, so we put our hands up like the ceiling can hold
welcome back. The Gonzaga women are turning into a tournament staple as well. They'll take on George Washington this Friday in Corvallis, Oregon. Creme 2's Evan Klosky is live in Portland tonight. He talked with their head coach about her first tournament appearance since stepping into her new role. Evan? Thanks, Jane. The Gonzaga women will be playing about 90 minutes south of Portland in Corvallis. Gonzaga an 11 seed, George Washington a 6. I caught up with first-year head coach Lisa Fortier earlier in the week as we discussed the Zags going dancing for the seventh consecutive season. That was some way to get into the March Madness tournament. Unlike years previously, you had to get the at-large bid. What was that feeling like and what was the nervousness leading up to that? Uh, it was a little bit nerve-wracking. You know, we t I tried not to talk to anybody. I had my ideas, and I looked at, I knew where our RPI was, mm -hmm. and was kind of fairly confident with that. But until you see your name on that board, there, there's no way of knowing that you're in for sure. Sure. Now you're in. Now it's on to George Washington. It seems like a pretty favorable matchup going out to Corvallis and having the team come across country. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I know we've traveled across country before, and at this time of year. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. I think that teams are playing on you know, energy and excitement, and they're a very good team. We're happy to be in the tournament, and we know that uh, we want to do work. In the last couple of years, earlier exits than you've wanted. Last year, a six seed, getting upset by an 11. Now the shoe's on the other foot. I think anything can happen there in the middle, and we've been on both ends of it, um, and we've been upset, and we've upset others. But I think that at this time of year, everybody needs to be playing their best basketball if they want to survive. And what was this first year like for you, taking over, having been an assistant for so long, and then finally just grabbing the program by the horns and saying, all right, this is mine now? It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, Kelly laid a great framework here and groundwork, and it was great that I could be a part of it. And it's very different as a head coach, but uh, I love coaching this team and this group of young women, and they've played really hard for us this year. The Sweet 16, the Elite Eight in Spokane, what would it mean to be playing in front of this crowd? I would tell you that we got to go one game at a time mm -hmm. and there's a lot of stuff that has to happen before then, but we would take it if we could get it. Tip-off is at 4.30 on Friday. The Zags actually historically not that bad as an 11 seed, 5-2 and two overall. And the last time they were this low of a seed, the last time they didn't win the WCC tournament in 2012, they actually went to the Sweet 16, and as you just heard, the Sweet 16 in Spokane. That would be some home court advantage. Reporting live outside the Moda Center, Evan Klosky, Crime 2 Sports. We're rooting for him. Thanks, Evan. Well, you're running out of time to get your bracket filled out. Coming up next, a look at a way you can win some cool prizes if you make the right pick. And how some Gonzaga University students are using the bracket in a rather unconventional way as a learning tool. I love living in my town. Everybody's here living out our dreams, dreams, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't be scared, take a chance. You know, filling out all of those brackets is a tradition of March Madness. At Gonzaga, it can be a pretty serious endeavor. Every year, GUTV hosts a bracket challenge, and then it produces a weekly student-run show. The competition allows alums to reconnect. It's also a major fundraiser. Taylor Vito explains. At a school like Gonzaga, liking basketball isn't necessarily a requirement to learn here, but it certainly helps. When you're part of this wonderful community, this is the most wonderful time of year. And if you thought March Madness couldn't be incorporated into school curriculum, you were wrong. For the fifth year, Gonzaga's broadcasting department is hosting a weekly student-run show all about those brackets. Students, their family members, and more importantly, alumni are invited to join. 
Last year's competition drew more than 100 entries. It's like an online reunion. A great way to keep everybody connected through this great tradition that we love so much. Alums are also asked to pitch in something these students don't have, cash. Basically, the money from bracketology does everything that the lab fees don't. One year, the Bracketology show raised roughly $7,000. That was enough to buy this new set. In addition to showing where everyone's bracket stands, the show also serves as an opportunity to highlight the work of both current kind of like students and Zags in the business. It's so wonderful to um, reconnect. We have an excuse to reconnect with all of our wonderful alumni. A connection all about basketball and those brackets we can't help but fill out. Taylor Vito, Krem 2 News. And be sure to connect to Krem 2 News on your phone and sign up for the March Bracket Challenge. You have until the games start tomorrow morning to register on the Spokane Hoops app or the main Krem 2 app. Click on the March Bracket Challenge. You can compete against your friends, the Krem 2 News team, even win prizes for beating sports director Darnay Tripp. Okay, well here is when and where you can catch our local games. The Eastern men play first tomorrow just before 7 o'clock on True TV. On Friday, the Gonzaga men and women play. The women start at 4.30, that's on ESPN2. And then the men tip off against North Dakota State around 6.50. That game will be on TNT. And we will be sure and have coverage of all the games and the next rounds on Krem2 News and Krem.com. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for real-time updates. We're going to cover all of it. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We hope to see much more of you as we cover the road to the Final Four. Go teams, all three of them. Good night, everyone. Really